In the last video, we introduced events, and we used the mouse event to be able to capture the mouse being clicked or rolled over different objects. What we're going to do now is introduce a new event called the timer event. A timer is like a stopwatch, where when you actually start the timer, it's going to then have a specific interval of time that's going to let pass, and then broadcast an event saying, time has expired. A timer event will continuously run over and over and over again but we can define it to specifically run a number of times, like, for example, 60 seconds. What we're going to do here is go through an example of a working timer event and show how it works. So I've already built a flaw file here, which is using the timer event. At the top, I've created a new variable called myTimer, which is going to be a new timer. Right now, I'm able to add inside here a parameter which is defined in milliseconds. Now, one second equals 1,000 milliseconds. So to have a timer that's one second, I use the number 1,000. So then I want to add my event listener. So in this case, my my timer, I'm adding the event listener to this. And oppose, as instead of using the mouse event, I want to listen for the timer event. So I'm listening for the timer event, and then I'm listening for the specific event called timer. Again, just like with our mouse example in the previous uh, tutorial, we need to have a callback function. And in this case, we're using TikTok, which is the function name that I've defined here at the bottom. Now, in order for the timer to actually get started, we need to use the start function. So onto the myTimer object, I use the start method. And if you notice, it does have a pair of parentheses after that that have to be included. My callback function here, TikTok, is accepting an event which in this case is a timer event, which we're going to ignore for right now. But we'll be diving into more of what the timer events later on. And then I have a trace statement, which is just sending out the, sending out the text tick. So let's actually run this to see what happens. So when I run this, you'll notice that the output panel is continually adding tick, tick, tick at one second intervals. This is because the timer is running at one second intervals and it's being broadcast, it's broadcast the timer event at the expiration of each second. The callback function is then executed every time that event is broadcasted, and then we have an additional tick being added to the output panel. So we can actually modify some of the properties of the timer event by modifying the uh, properties up here at the top. So right now we have it set at 1,000 seconds, or sorry, 1,000 milliseconds. Let's change that to half a second or 500 milliseconds. I can specifically have this run for a set number of times. So without defining anything else, this timer is going to go on and on forever. What I can do is actually add a comma here and then define a second property. In this case, that property is going to be the number of times the timer will run. Let's set it for three. So what's going to happen is that we have a 500 millisecond timer that's going to run three times and then stop. So let's run it again and see what happens. You'll notice now we get tick, tick, tick in more rapid succession than we did the first time. And you notice it only runs three times because we've defined the timer to expire after three cycles. There's another timer event that we can use to actually capture when the timer has completely run all the cycles. Let's add a new event listener to capture that. My timer, add event listener timer event, and we want to have timer complete. Timer complete is going to be broadcasted when all the cycles have been fully run. So in this case, after three times. And then I'm going to create a separate callback function, timer finished. I'm going to go down here and create the new fu callback function. I'm going to add in timer event as the parameter. put in my curly braces, and then I'm going to put in a trace statement here, timer is finished. So let's run this again and see what happens. So we get tick, 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 but then in addition, once the timer is completely expired, it broadcasts the timer complete event. And we're capturing that in the timer finished callback function, which then outputs the, the text, timer is finished. So now we've got the basics of using the mouse, of using the timer event, 
And in the next tutorial, we're going to have a complete example where we can show a clock where we can manipulate the different hands of the clock using ActionScript and actually create a working clock that's going to count down for 60 seconds.